This is part one of the tutorial on how to use this home construction spreadsheet. So I want to run through a few examples, and this is going to be a several part series, but uh, I want to start here with the first one, planning, then go through project insurance and, and, and job site facility and, and all the rest of these as well. But before we do that, let's give a quick just idea of what we're going to do first. I'm going to start with the estimated tab here. So we'll, we'll, we'll do uh, what this means is, is like if you're just trying to estimate how much your house is going to be, you'd start with that. But then if you start getting like a say like a verbal quote from some some people that it's more firm or subcontractors that is then, then you would start using these. This will help you keep track of how your costs have been updated as you move through the project. Then you may get to a place where they give you a written bid and you would you would use this and then you have a place where you would uh, put in your actuals and you can see as I change these all the uh, t totals are being updated and everything but you know actuals that would include any change orders and anything like that um, okay so that that's but anyway I'll leave this at estimated and like I said we're gonna start with the planning here and um, so you can see just very quickly so you have an idea how this works you've got 31590 there on the planning so if I come down here to this planning tab which you see right here you can see the total there is 31590 so that's that's it's summarizing that and same thing for the project insurance it's gonna basically take this 7940 and put it up here real clean for you but anyway let's start with the planning so in the planning phase you've got like you know surveys maybe you're gonna have a guy that's gonna come out there and survey your lines for you and you know you can choose to put that as, as a lump sum a lot of times you, you probably want to do that for the survey and um, you know put 400 here uh, if for some reason you want to do like a detail type thing and do like a cost per unit maybe you've got some type of you know uh, you know this is probably not applicable if you're gonna build just one house you'd probably go with lump sum but if you've got a business and this guy does a bunch of stuff for you maybe you know he's gonna give you a price cost per unit he, he does it for you know 250 per unit and how many units is he gonna do you in the quantity and, and those kind of things but anyway for now for simplicity we'll leave it a lump sum next thing design services so you've got somebody who's gonna come up with the um, now before I go too much into this let's have a look at some of these other tabs okay um, so we've got the the cost uh, pie which is here this is everything you saw in the summary table this is um, just broken down into different slices here so you can see it from a high level okay so like planning is like 10 percent and um, you know that's the part that we were on just now uh, and then you can see what what takes up the most and and in this case actually the the most is is other and that's kind of why I break it out here into this other circle here to so, so you can see what other is and then but anyway these other slices in the main pie here it's you know exterior veneer is pretty big framing is pretty big it's 11 percent okay but uh, then we go over to schedule and you can see that um, so the planning phase that's what we we're just looking at here this is you know the survey lot cost design services permits construction financing okay so then we've got um, and by the way I'm going through this quickly right now what I plan to do a you know like I said a several part series where we'll go through in more detail on this but anyway this is kind of the first uh, video to kind of show a high level what's going on so we've got the planning phase here and all those items you saw uh, all the orange cells that's where you input items um, everything else is calculated so this is where you start it you, this is your start date so we're gonna say uh, March 4th let's call it 20 what year are we in 23 okay update that and you can see that the the chart is gonna update for you um, based on that so and very quickly let's actually say that uh, your design services for example let's change it to 10 and when I do that I want you to watch over here to what happens over here on on uh, this side over here I'm hit enter now okay and then I'm going to you can see that it, it updated um, after you get through updating it what you do is you come over here you click this refresh arrows and what that'll do is it'll it'll go through and it'll put these arrows back on the blocks where they go all right and then um, uh, let's see so basically when you as you update this uh, it'll do all the hard work for you now these are not orange cells but you can still update these and the reason why they're not orange is because once you do it once you pretty much have it set for your process you know even if you're a custom home builder and you do a lot of houses uh, you know once you have it down your process down once you set this this is pretty much set um, but anyway it's it's uh, 
but you can go in and change these relationships if you need to. So for example, if if you've ever used a Gantt chart, if you've ever seen a Gantt chart, that's what this is. So for example, the, the, the design services, the controlling step is three. So this three right here corresponds to this step three right here. So what that's saying in this example is that the design services, before you can start that, you've got to finish the lot costs. That may or may not be true, but that's just the way I've got it set up in this uh, example. That seems pretty reasonable for a workflow. Um, you know, you could tie it to, you know, you could really even start this, you know, you could start this at, let the controlling step be one, you know, you could just let it start whenever you start the, 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 the project. Uh, um, but anyway, you can set that up however you want to set your process up. Um, and it, you know, like I said, if you want to go through and tweak these, you can, you can, you can do that. So, um, then you've got, you know, these relationships, you can do finish to start, start to start, finish to finish. Um, a lot of times you're going to do finish to start. These are industry terms. Um, basically really quickly, if you're not familiar with it, finish to start would be like, you have to finish the foundation before you can start the, uh, the framing. And then, but, uh, there might be some things where you just have to, uh, start to start. So for example, a start to start relationship might be, um, that you can start, um, you know, uh, nailing the, 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 the wood framing together, um, it, when you start the framing. Okay. So if you wanted to get down to that granularity on, on a certain project, okay. Um, I, you know, I doubt for this that you'd want to do that, but anyway, it's just an example. So then you've got lag time. The lag time is basically any days you put in here is going to, be a delay between finishing one step and starting the, the next one and then <clears throat> and like i said these are all industry terms if you're not familiar with them there's a lot of videos that can help you understand what is lag time for a gantt chart and uh, that they'll explain it but anyway uh once you set if you you know just input a value here it'll automatically update over here on your gantt chart um other predecessors these are just notes uh, the, the one that you have to, the one that controls the, the, the process here is the one here over here in this, in this column. These are just notes. You can add anything you want to here to just remind yourself, Oh, pay this guy on Tuesday or whatever you want to do here. Um, and then on the next, uh, deal here, this is a step-by-step, -step, uh, checklist. So for example, we went through some of the, uh, planning, uh, stages. So, so a lot of those are going to be involved here in this pre-construction uh, part here where it says, okay, obtain financing uh, commitment, you know, go to a bank or whatever, get, make sure you can secure the loan. Next one is select a lot to build on, sign a contract uh, to purchase the lot, obtain house plan that fits the budget and the size of the lot. So that would go back to the design services. Um, and, and again, so now these orange cells that are here, these are just notes. These have no effect on anything on this tab. So what these dates that you see right here are all coming from the dates that you set right here in the previous tab in the schedule. The uh, costs that you see over here, the, the, these dollar values are all being uh, coming from the cost that you set over here, the, the, the uh, uh, cost tab. So um, everything uh, on this sheet is just being pulled in and summarized to help you to know. So for example, um, the, uh, so for the site prep and compaction tests, so the soil testing and all that, it, this is letting you know, okay, this is going to take place approximately on the 8th of March, 2023. And this is all, again, based on the schedule that you set up, the durations that you set up over there. It's all being pulled and saying, okay, that's probably, that should be happening on eight, the 8th of March. The cost is this, whatever cost you put in on the cost app for that. Say in this case, it's, it's $500. And then, um, and, uh, this is, again, you may have heard of uh, payment points. So this is going to be a labor uh, over here on, on this uh, this side, right up in this area. And this is going to be payment points over here on the uh, material side. So f like in this particular case, this, this one is going to be a labor cost for the guy to come out and do the soil testing because he's, you're just going to pay him for his labor. He's going to come out, maybe give you a test or whatever. But he, this, and so uh, you're going to pay him, say, you know, uh, you, if you're at the estimating phase, you estimated you'd pay him five, 500 bucks on the 8th of March. Okay. And that's that. And then you've got, uh, over here for the material, like, uh, here at the, say, for example, the building supply store, you, you were planning to buy a, uh, uh, be able to uh, post the, the permit sign 
on your site on um, March 17th and you estimated you'd pay 50 bucks for that sign. That's coming right here for the materials, okay? And you said, okay, that's going to come from the building supply store sign, okay? Um, so, uh, and then f all this information also comes into a draw schedule. You may have heard of a draw schedule. What that is is basically how much uh, your bank is going to want to know, all right, how much money do you need and when are you going to need it? Uh, and this is what a draw schedule is going to show you. So, this breaks it down on labor material, but the total is here in green. So you can see that as you go from you know February, March, April, uh, then May and June, you can see, okay, you're going to need, this is how much money you're going to be pulling out, okay? And, and the, you know, here's the, the day you're going to be pulling it out, and this is going to be the total that you're going to be pulling it out, okay, until you get to your, your final amount that you pull out at the end of your project, okay? Um, Okay, and that's that. That's a quick overview of this uh, spreadsheet. Now, um, let's quickly go through. Uh, um, well, let me end the video there, and I think on the next. Uh, uh, I know this video is probably getting pretty long already, so let me go ahead and end it there, and on the next one we can take up the the next lesson.